Hi, I'm Grant Steven. And I'm Chris Bernier. And we're the two investment guys. This week, Chris and I want to talk a little bit about the return of volatility into the equity market conditions that exist. And if we just uh, take a second to step back and look at this year so far, you know, really, Chris, what we had was markets very focused and probably rightly so on economic metrics that continued to show slow build recovery. And um, in usual fashion, uh, markets took that and got ahead of themselves, uh, you know, th thinking that the worst was mm -hmm. well past us and all is good. Well, that's usually uh, met with some turbulence along the way, which has now just shown up. Um, and then one of the things that's hit the wire recently, Chris, is the U.S. Federal Reserve chatter around, you know, their uh, stimulus program. So why don't we talk about what's happened in the last two months, let's say. Sure. Well, if we go back to mid-May, we saw the 10-year government bonds approaching 1.70, which is an extremely low level. We've only seen that level twice in the last hundred years, and we've had it a couple of times in, in the past six months. Um, and so that uh, uh, occurred, and then we saw the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve decide that they were going to talk to the market about tapering back on their quantitative easing. And this got markets concerned because what they've been doing is buying bonds to keep rates low. If they stop buying bonds, rates should rise. And immediately what we saw over the subsequent six weeks is a rise in those bond yields from 1.7 to 2.5%. That caused all of the interest-sensitive parts of the market to sell off, REITs, pipelines, utilities, and the like. And so that's kind of where we're at today. Telecoms is another interest-sensitive area. Yeah. And so now we're starting to see uh, a little bit of a bounce, but the volatility, as you said, is here. Still, still with us. And yeah. so that quasi-correction was rough number, about 10%. So... Um, what do we see now? Well, markets are probably going to stabilize here at some point, uh, give or take a little bit. And I think the focus will return again on these slow growth metrics that we've been talking about. And I'll give you a for instance on that. Uh, very recently, we just saw the durable goods order in the U.S. come out and beat uh, the expectations. We saw new home sales beat the expectations and, it, in fact, put in a number that hasn't been seen since July of 2008 and also the consumer confidence number uh, that came out beat all the forecasts and that was better than anything we've seen since January of 2008. So the market's going to go back to a focus on economic metrics mm -hmm. like it should. But what should somebody be doing here, Chris? Well, if we go back a couple of months, we talked about, you know, that old sell in May and go away. It wasn't because of that seasonal aspect of things, but more because of valuations. We said it's not a bad time to consider taking profit. Don't feel like you have to get that cash put to work right away. So if you're sitting on some cash, now's the time maybe to add some quality back into the portfolio with, you know, certainly uh, companies and investments that are at a better valuation. Right. And so it's yield and you hit the nail on the head when you said quality. Always be adding in the quality names here instead of uh, just sort of searching through things and maybe looking for high yield. So always quality. Yeah, absolutely. I want to thank you again for your questions and comments. Please keep them coming. You can contact Grant and I at twoinvestmentguys.com. Join us next time because Chris and I are going to continue our discussion around market dynamics. So until then, I'm Grant. And I'm Chris. And we're the Two Investment Guys.